Hey, ka, hey, ka, hey, ka, hi, everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying your lovely day. In this following tutorial, I'm going to be showing you on how to install the Wadudo SDK. So if you're someone who's wondering, you know, as you're using Wadudo more and more, you're probably wondering to yourself, man, I would love to use Poyomi or Lil Toon Shader on my 3D model. Or, man, I would really love to have some custom ear wiggle, tail wagging, or wing wagging sort of animation going on with going on with my model or maybe I want to do a meme dance that's like custom made to my model for Wadudo or custom props or particles or even environments you know all this crazy custom stuff or anything like that and pretty much we can do that with Wadudo all thanks to the Wadudo SDK and I'll be showing you how to install it now if you want the written version of this tutorial please check out the Wadudo documentation as there are written versions of this tutorial but either way though pretty much you can scroll through under modding and overview which all the links are in the description especially the direct download to the Wadudo SDK so that way it gives you some easiness so you're gonna scroll down or download it from my description and you can download the Wadudo SDK 0.12.0 over here now do keep in mind there may be some updates that may happen with the SDK so do keep that in mind for future cases or in the case if Wadudo does change you any versions do keep in mind about that it may happen in the future but either way once you have the project file and remember this is a unity project file not a unity package there's a difference so this so once you have this installed you're going to then make sure that you have unity installed if you are a first-time user of unity unity is 100% free you don't have to pay for it. I don't know where you hear the words that unity is paid maybe it could be the website but unity is 100% free do not be misled so you're going to make sure to download unity 2021.3.18 this exact version and if it's hard for you to find it go to the description below there is a direct download to downloading the you know this version of unity you'll also need to download unity hub as it makes things so much easier to organize all of your projects and stuff so do keep that in mind but once you install Unity Hub and make sure you install this exact version of Unity, then you can be able, of course, if you're a first time user, make sure that you activate your personal license. And just because it says license, that doesn't mean you have to pay. It is 100% free. So you click on preferences, you can go to licenses, and you can activate your personal license here. So, you know, you can always check. But make sure you keep this personal so that way you can do whatever you want completely for free. Now, I will also mention as well, since there are some users from BC Faith or Vignon or VR Chat, because each of these programs have completely different versions. BC Faith uses 2019, Vignon uses 2020 of Unity, and VR Chat uses 2022. I know it gets really annoying to have multiple Unity versions, especially if you lack space on your computer, your computer storage. So. All I can say is you're going to have to, for Wadu those case, you have to use this exact version. If you're using 2022, it's not going to work. If you're using 2020, it's not going to work with Wadu Do. You could use a slightly different version. Like, let's say, you know, for a project, you have to use 3.20 instead of 18. Like, that's kind of all right. But you can't go, like, a year off from... The Unity version at best but even then I still recommend stay with the exact version especially to avoid some weird rare bugs that you might encounter in your 3d journey but I just want to make sure that is very much elaborate before people ask anyways once you have Unity installed and the the Wadudo SDK downloaded you're gonna make sure to open up the Wadudo SDK zip file depending on what you use 7z WinRAR, Bandy Zip, or just the normal Windows, you know, zip extractor, whatever you use, and you know, you can always Google how to extract the zip file. Pretty much, you will have this open. Make sure on File Explorer that you have, you know, you choose the file location that you want. Let's say I want mine to be in my tutorial folder. And what you're going to do is you're going to right click and you're going to make a new folder. Now this folder is going to be the name of your Unity project. I can name this my Wadudo avatar. 
And then in that folder, I'm going to copy all of the stuff that's in here. Control A, and then click and drag over here to install it. And then once you have this all set up here, what you're going to then do, you can get out of your extractor. You're going to go into the Unity Hub and click on Add. And then what you're going to do is, depending on your file location, on the other file explorer, go to the top part of the bar here, click on it, Control A, you know, Control A to select all of it or just click and drag, then Control C to copy, then go to this file explorer that Unity created. You can tell because there's an open and cancel button. Click on the top bar again, Control V, and then press on Enter, and it'll take you immediately to the folder that you made. Once you have that, then you're going to click on open and keep in mind that depending on your setup if you plan on having multiple different projects per model do keep in mind you'll have to repeat this process every time you want to make a new unity project for water though but do keep in mind there is a mod there is like a sort of mod set folder set system with water though so it can help you out with like organizing your stuff so you don't have to always keep remaking the Unity project every time, it makes things much more convenient. So you can literally just have, you know, just in case anyone's going to ask, you can literally just have one Unity project just for your case, especially if you do commissions for water dough related stuff, you can keep it all in one project, unless otherwise, you know, it's your preference. But pretty much once you have that, you should be able to have this open and, you know, if installed properly, you should be able to have this, you know, detected properly. If by any chance you have the wrong version of Unity, you'll have to tell Unity what version you have to use. If it's a much older version, you're going to have some errors. So like I said, stay on the version I just told you, 2021.3.18. But once you have that, give Unity some time to load. It may take a couple minutes, but it should take no more than 10 minutes or at best 6 minutes. It depends on how fast your PC is. For me, it's usually pretty fast for me, but, you know, give it some time to process, and once, you know, it's all done, then I'm going to quickly show you about some things you could do with the mod, and then go from there. Alright, so here is your Unity project. It should open up just like this. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the VRM plugin is already installed in here. You don't have to put the VRM, you don't have to put any version of VRM in here, it's already here. So I'm just gonna kinda show you around the Unity project. So here, VRM is already installed, it is using this exact version, 0.107.0, it's the one that Wadado uses, so you don't have to import VRM yourself. And then over here we have the Wadudo tab here. This is where the magic happens, or at least how you can get started with your stuff. So what you're going to do is, you know, for beginners, you're going to create a new mod and then you'll name the mod whatever you want. I can call this like my avatar or my prop or something. So this is where you are going to be able to, you know, organize your, your stuff depending on what you want to be exported. So it could be avatar, it could be prop, it could be particle, but keep in mind that you know you're gonna have to do it for every single one so let's say I type in my avatar like so and then I create mod then it'll create a folder that says my avatar if I want to do a prop conversion then I'll have to do another mod and type in my prop and then also the other thing goes with environment and keep in mind when it comes to, let's say if you're going to do multiple avatars, you're going to have to do it per avatar. I mean, there's other ways, again, you can do it, but just to keep things simple as best as I can, you can just, you know, just type how, however, you know, you want here. So just, if you're going to have multiple avatars, you're going to have to make a mod per avatar you want to convert. And same with per prop, you're going to have to make a new mod per one prop that you make, and so on. So... That's something to keep in mind. You can even keep in mind, you're gonna also may wanna switch active mod if you like. So if you click on switch active mod, 
Here you can choose which mod you want to be active on. This is referring to which one you want to build. So if I, let's say, want to convert two avatars for Wadudo for the case, I can click on my avatar and build mod here. But then if I want to convert the other avatar, then I can click on the other mod for the other droid model or something like that. And then I click on build mod from there. So do keep that in mind. You know, you can switch over to... You know whichever you want whichever mod and you can even as well customize your mod settings over here so mod settings could be here this one will allow you to set up some pretty stuff so you know how like with VR models you have the profile picture and then who made the model and all that stuff you could do it here as well with the mod settings so you could say with my avatar you could put in the profile picture here you can put all the information you want especially if you're gonna share it now mod asset this is referring to where in the you know where in the project here is the file at which if you do use the new mod this is already taken care of for you you don't have to worry about it but for mod export directory it is left blank you can export this however wherever you want but if you want this to be detected in water though you have to export it in the streaming assets and then depending on where what it is if it's a character it goes in the character folder if it's a prop it'll go in the prop folder if it's an environment it'll go into this and so on so keep in mind the mod for directory it's best to put it in the water dough streaming assets here so you can literally I can full screen here you can see pretty much my directory it, it depends on where your steam apps are so steam library steam apps common water dough water dough data streaming assets you can pause the video if you want to take a look at that or just open up water dough click on the purple paw and you can literally just click on open data folders and there's like a quick shortcut to it i personally recommend definitely having this pin like quick pin here so that way you know as you're if if you want to like copy and paste it over the you know copy and paste the file link over here it will definitely provide some great convenience so i'll say keep that in mind now another thing i also want to bring up as well is that you know this is for more advanced users but if by any chance you let's say have an avatar and it's really super unoptimized for some reason you can also change optimize for file size if you have like issues where you get an error about like you know it's not building because it's too big of a file you can always change it to file size depending on what you want it depends i usually leave it by default but if the model's way too unoptimized you can probably you know use this or if in general like the file ends up being too big you can always do that but i just want to make sure that's mentioned pretty much and then of course you know once you the setup character this is only for avatar so once you input your fbx file or vrm file you can click on setup character and then you know once you have your character set up in the hierarchy and click on it you have to do this because if you don't like i know there's a manual way of doing it but technically wadudo will always normalize your model no matter what so it's best that you do this and check for any bugs and all that so that's if you're going to do avatar you don't do this for props or environments or anything like that it's only for characters so i just wanted to make sure this is elaborated you know you're gonna have to use this if you're gonna set up a character and otherwise though the last thing, of course, is you can build a mod. Now, in order to build a mod, you'll, it'll have to be a prefab. So, let's say, for example, I have my avatar. And let's say, for example, on the hierarchy, I'm gonna, I'm just going to do this as demonstration purposes so you get the idea of, like, the overview of the, the SDK. So, let's say, for example, I got a cube or something like that. This is my, this is my VTuber over here. So I'm going to go ahead, you know, once your avatar is placed in the hierarchy. So let's say for the cube, this will be my avatar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, let's say your character is in the hierarchy and you're finished setting it up. You can then click and drag your avatar over here and then it'll become a prefab. Now, you don't have to have like your shaders or all your stuff in this folder. What mainly matters in the mod folder is that this prefab file is in here. So just keep that in mind. If it's, you know, it has to be a prefab because Waterdo, the Waterdo SDK will not care about anything but this prefab. So if you want your stuff to be properly exported, you have to 
have it as a prefab by just clicking dragging your model from here to here do keep in mind also i do recommend before making the model into a prefab make sure i have like a duplicate beforehand like here let me show you so if i delete this real quickly and I go in, you know, let's say I add my character here. I personally recommend having like a duplicate that becomes a prefab just, you know, for editing, you know, reasons and stuff. So I usually just have a duplicate. So there's my original model in case I have to edit or correct something. And then I have the prefab over here. So I can just click and drag it. And if I have to update, if I made changes, then you can delete the prefab. You can duplicate this again and then just, you know... You can go ahead, click it here, replace anyways, and you should be good from there. So I just want to make sure that one is elaborated. And you have to make sure that the prefab is named to whatever you want it export. So if it's a character, you name it as character like this. If it's a prop, then it will have to be set to the word prop. If it's an environment, it has to be a scene file. That's different. It cannot be a prefab. It's a scene file, which that'll be for a different tutorial. If it's a particle, you'll name it particle like so if it's an animation then you name it as animation and depending on what it is that's how you'll properly export but do keep in mind obviously if you name your character if you have like your character and you name the particle you're gonna have some issues so make sure to name it properly refer to the water documentation but of course for future tutorials i will make sure this is re-elaborated so that way as you're doing this sort of thing you'll remember okay this is what you're supposed to do but that's pretty much the overview on the water sdk in a nutshell if you want to like you know know how the layout is and stuff and I will also mention as well that if by any chance you, let's say you're working on your avatar and you happen to accidentally, let's say, type in dynamic bone and you're like, whoa, am I able to have dynamic bones for free? No, these are, these are, these don't function. You need to actually like buy the asset in order to use it. So just keep in mind, there may be some assets like while you're typing in the component there may be some things that you're like oh wow do i actually have that for free no 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 it's just there because wadudo supports that plugin or that you know asset for the asset bundle model but you have to if you in order for your you to actually use it you have to actually buy or get the asset in any way so if it's dynamic then you have to pay 20 bucks to get it or if you happen to see magica cloth or anything like that like see magica cloth yeah, you need to actually buy the things in order for it to be usable. So just just want to make sure that's elaborated before anybody asks. These are not functional unless you freaking buy the asset itself. So just be aware about that. But otherwise, though, for the most part, that's pretty much the overview of the Wadudo SDK. And those are the main things you have to worry about. And if there's any questions you have, feel free to refer to the documentation. You can ask me in the comments, but I heavily recommend joining the Wadudo Discord server because there are a lot of active people there that's willing to help you. There's even the devs there and a lot of, you know, there's some big nerds over there you can definitely hang out with and learn more things about Wadudo with. So I hope that this tutorial helped and gives you extra information on the installation process and the overall Wadudo SDK overview. And I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye! Thank you to all my Snowflake members. In case you don't know, I have YouTube membership. So if you want to further support this channel and what I do, then feel free to join the Snowflake members. Otherwise though, just your support means so much to me and I appreciate every ounce of it. Either way though, with that being said though, hey, 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 goodbye bye everyone. I hope to see you guys next time, okay? Bye bye.